I think the key takeaway from my experiences with Unreal Engine 5 so far is that the core feature set basically works. Lumen GI solves indirect lighting in real time to a high degree of fidelity, producing great looking shading in most circumstances, if set up correctly. Lumen reflections similarly help to light glossy and semi-gloss surfaces correctly, giving them good looking reflective detail. Virtual shadow maps overcome the limitations of cascaded shadow map techniques to deliver super fine shadow detail, with accurate variable penumbra in some cases. And Nanite delivers high quality meshes with a continuous level of detail system that simplifies asset production and prevents LOD popping. In the few games where these techniques are combined effectively, we do see a pretty tremendous uplift in visual quality relative to games on Unreal Engine 4. The lighting detail in UE5 titles is superb, even in games that are only making use of software lumen, which isn't using hardware ray tracing. You get lots of fine indirect lighting, reflections, and shadows, with each technique showing fidelity that wouldn't really be easily replicable in a last generation game. In broad strokes, the tech works, but when we do an in-depth look at some of the console versions of these games, the results can be a bit more mixed at times. We're going to look at PS5 and Series X first, before moving on to Series S in a later section. Fort Solus is a good example. The game's Lumen GI is doing some really cool stuff here. Look at how this dining area floods with subtle illumination once the lights turn on, for instance, or how we get real-time bounce lighting from the player's flashlight. But there are other instances, like with the moving red light in this scene, or with the lighting in this scene, where we get a lot of breakup and artifacting in the Lumen GI, which isn't its software guys here. I think this shows the importance of getting these techniques implemented well, which could involve changing lighting arrangements, removing emissive lights, or adding more direct lighting to the scene. You could also simply increase the amount of rays shot into the scene per pixel. We can see the flip side of this problem when we put the game into performance mode, where the breakup and shimmer become a much greater problem. Increasing the ray count or shifting the game into the more expensive hardware RT implementation of Lumen could be beyond the capabilities of the console though, depending on the game. The PC version of Fort Solus certainly looks much better when modified to support hardware ray tracing, but that might have proven too expensive on PS5. The Talos Principle 2 is another recent UE5 title that shows off some of the potential issues with UE5 on consoles. There's some stuff that's pretty cool here, like super fine shadow detail, courtesy of UE5's virtual shadow map system. The Nanite geometry is also very dense and doesn't present with any LOD popping or anything like that. Lumen reflections though seem to have been omitted, perhaps as a consequence of targeting consoles, though these reflections can be enabled on PC. Probably the biggest issues are related to the Lumen GI once again. The GI treatment can look pretty terrific here, with a beautiful representation of indirect illumination that is a real standout. But there are problems, like how the foliage is badly over darkened. Some of the lighting on consoles suffers from obvious breakup in some moments as well, with a spotty appearance. In the absence of more powerful console hardware, you will see some of these lighting issues in indirectly lit areas across titles that use software Lumen. Immortals of Avium presents certain Lumen lighting issues as well, mostly related to that over darkening issue with software Lumen. The coarseness of the SDFs gives us some very dark shade on the roots here, though with less fine geometry the results are excellent. And when we fire our spells at the wall, you see a crude, speckled impression of the light on the ceiling. The results here are mostly decent, but indirectly illuminated scenes do expose some issues. With these games, I think we see some of the practical limits of Unreal Engine 5 techniques on consoles. Their power constraints necessitate certain compromises for performance, which PC hardware is sometimes able to overcome when given access to higher settings options. I think Robocop is probably the best adjusted of the recent UE5 crop on consoles. The lighting just looks superb here, and any lumen issues are kept to a minimum. Typically, you have to go out of your way to find them. The game also looks great in its 60 FPS targeting mode, even with a visibly lower ray count for Lumen GI, 
and we get solid lumen reflections here too. There are ways to get really great results out of these techniques even if you don't have a lot of hardware power on tap, though it does seem to require some careful artist work. Juza is another really interesting and well-designed recent UE5 game that's worth highlighting as well. The game uses very low detail textures, so a lot of the color variation in the image comes from indirect lighting. Light bounces through spaces and pools in crevices, with some terrific looking imagery as a result. Software Lumen's exaggerations work pretty well in this context, I think, given the more stylized art. Virtual shadow maps are highlighted effectively here as well, lending pin-sharp and highly detailed shadows to even the most minor geometric elements. For a quick look at what the hardware RT path for UE5 may look like on the consoles, we need to take a trip back to 2021's The Matrix Awakens demo. The Lumen indirect lighting detail looks great here, and mostly resolves without visible noise. Reflections are the real standout here though, as tracing against triangles allows them to closely approximate the scene in a way that really can't be replicated with software Lumen. Visual quality is only half the story here though. So what about performance? With the 30 FPS targeting games using UE5, frame rates tend to be quite consistent. Robocop does throw up some drops in very intense action, but otherwise there aren't really any issues. At 60 FPS, there's a bit of a spectrum. Jusant is nearly perfect, with very occasional one-off drops that look like traversal stutters, but it otherwise maintains a stable 60 FPS. On the flip side, you have a game like Immortals of Avium, which is usually sub-60, or a game like Lords of the Fallen, which suffers from profound stuttering issues. It's not totally clear what to chuck up to UE5 though. For instance, Immortals of Avium actually runs a lot better on Series S than Series X, albeit at a much lower resolution, suggesting that the issues are primarily GPU related. Just setting the game to a lower resolution would likely clean up most of the issues that we're seeing here. The same is likely true for Robocop, which drops down pretty hard during some more intense battles, but exhibits decent CPU performance on PC. I would much prefer the developers of these games set a more conservative resolution target, instead of presenting a variable performance level. Other issues, like the traversal stutters we see in many UE5 games, seem more closely linked to the engine technology. These may be hard to overcome, but achieving a generally good performance level on consoles using UE5 seems entirely possible, judging from the results in these early titles.